Energy is mainly needed for transportation via cars, trains, airplanes and ships, and for heating houses, as well as industry. About 80% of the total world energy consumption is derived from fossil fuels. Renewable sources account for about 15% of our energy consumption. The use of fossil fuels leads to an increase in the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, resulting in climate change. Therefore, further transition towards clean energy is needed. Fossil fuels are a finite source, while renewables are an infinite source for delivering energy. We will focus on bioenergy, which is energy derived from biological sources, such as wood, bioethanol, biodiesel and biogas. Bioenergy is CO2 neutral and therefore mitigates global warming. CO2 neutral means that the amount of CO2 emitted in the atmosphere equals the amount of CO2 consumed by new biomass. Other renewable energy sources include hydropower, wind and solar energy. Renewable sources, like all types of biomass, are not always the same as sustainable sources. For example, wood, considered to be humankind's first source of energy, is still the most important source of renewable energy. Many people, especially in developing countries, depend on energy derived from wood for cooking and heating. However, wood originates from trees. When forests are not well maintained, this leads to a degradation of important ecosystems. In addition, when wood is burned in an inefficient way, the emissions can result in poor air quality such as smog with negative health effects. Therefore, we should always be aware which biomass will or can be used as a renewable energy source with little or no negative side effects. This can be achieved by looking at the value pyramid. If biomass is used for delivering energy, we need a lot of biomass at a low price. So, if we look at the value pyramid more closely, the challenge is to use biomass first for making products at the highest level possible and the residues can then be reused at a lower value level. This step can be repeated until reaching the lowest value level, when we can make energy from the final residues. This process of using biomass by going down the value pyramid is called cascading. Cascading, reduce, reuse and recycling are all intertwined. Sugar beets are a good example for describing cascading. Sugar beets are primarily produced to make sugar. The main residue after the process of extracting the sugar from the beets is beet pulp. Beet pulp can be used as feed for cattle, but it also contains valuable components such as cellulose and pectin. From cellulose we can make cellulose-based bioplastics and pectin can be used as a thickening agent in all kinds of food products. The final residual plant material can then be processed in a digester to produce biogas as bioenergy. This is a whole crop utilization by cascading down the biobased pyramid. Processing biomass by cascading decreases negative side effects. The demand for bioenergy is increasing rapidly, which is very positive because this will lower the amount of CO2 emissions. However, other problems can occur. For example, palm oil can be converted to biodiesel and sugar from corn or sugarcane can be converted into bioethanol. Growing these crops competes with available land area for food crops, while hunger continues to be a problem worldwide. This is the so-called food versus fuel dilemma. Biofuels derived directly from edible sources are called first-generation biofuels. It seems logical to make more land available to produce crops for biofuels, but this comes at a cost. For palm oil, for instance, rainforest is being turned into large palm oil plantations, resulting in a loss of biodiversity. Second-generation biofuels overcome these problems because they are produced sustainably by using biomass that consists of residual non-food parts, such as those described in the case of sugar beets, in which the beet pulp can be digested into biogas. Other examples of second-generation biofuels are produced from crops not used for food production, such as using lichnocellulose from grass. 
Much research is being done on microbes from the digestive systems of cows or other herbivores. These microbes can degrade complex molecules such as lignocellulose into available sugars, which can be converted into bioethanol. The results are promising. There are also third generation biofuels, which are biofuels produced from algae. The productivity of algae is much higher than any other crop. Algae don't have to grow roots, stems or branches. All the energy from the sun is used very efficiently and it's possible to grow algae with a high oil content. Algae can be grown in seawater. Nutrients can be provided by using wastewater and CO2 from factories. Algae could therefore be a significant contributor of clean and environmentally friendly biodiesel in the future. Presently, the costs of producing biodiesel from algae are still too high, due to several reasons. Cultivating algae in open ponds is not always successful, because the algae can become contaminated with other microorganisms. Cultivation in closed systems, called photobioreactors, is costly. And furthermore, harvesting the algae from the water requires a great deal of energy. Finally, extraction of the oil from the algae involves chemicals that are not always environmentally friendly. Algae are still so promising that much research is being done on these topics to make algae a source for bioenergy. In principle, bioenergy provides a good source of renewable energy. Its contribution to lowering our dependence on fossil fuels is a good step towards a bio-based economy. However, we need to bear in mind the food versus fuel dilemma. Therefore, we should only implement bioenergy in a sustainable manner.